There's no business like show business, especially if it's Italian horror. Let's review Stage Fright. Stage Fright stars David Brandon, Barbara Cupisti, and is directed by Michelle Suave. What's up guys, it's time to review another Italian horror classic, Stage Fright. After watching this movie, I really, yeah, this is definitely a classic. This is a great freaking movie, and it's unique. Somebody sent me the DVD of this. If you sent this to me, let me know down in the comments. I was trying to scramble to see if I could find, but I, I, I couldn't find who sent it to me. But uh, yeah, th this was quite refreshing, and it's one of those movies that takes place in one setting. Like, I can kind of compare this to Demons, because Demons takes place in a movie theater, the whole movie. This one takes place at a theater company, I guess. It's this like like Broadway type stage show, and you got this director who's hell bent on not only making the thing but also promoting it the right way to try to get as many butts in the seats as possible. And when you get that uh, adamant and passionate about it, sometimes when people are dying along the way, you might want to use that to your advantage because then it becomes this like mystique type thing. Uh, oh, I want to go see that show now because there's a rumor that somebody actually died while they were making it. And that stuff does kind of play into this. But they're really smart about how this thing played out. After the first person dies, you would think, okay, we, we got to cut this and uh, yeah, nobody, we're not doing this anymore, okay? But they have a way of working it out. So it makes sense. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, the killer in this, he is this guy from this mental institution who escapes he's wearing this owl mask which if i had to pick the movie apart it is a horrible mask for a killer but luckily they make up for it in terms of like the kills and i guess the italian horror of it all to me this is the most like slasher out of all italian horror like i wouldn't even call this a giallo movie to me it feels more like just a straight up slasher giallo killers usually have a certain look to them you know with the, the black uh hat the trench coat and all that and no, this killer, he's like a normal slasher killer with like a freaking owl mask on. You know, because the owl mask was one of the other characters and he gets killed and so the killer puts that mask on. But you got some great kills along the way too. Now one thing I love about Stage Fright is it really knows what it is. There's a lot of fun to be had along the way. It doesn't take itself too seriously, even though it's not like a comedy or anything. But you can tell it's tongue in cheek and they have a lot of fun along the way and it even opens up with them at practice and so you feel like this it's an opening kill but it's not an opening kill it's part of the the program which makes it even more interesting because the killer hasn't even escaped yet but so anyway i was talking about earlier how they get away with after the first kill they keep doing the practice and staying in the the facility um this character goes outside and, in the rain and she's killed which, by the way, a great freaking kill. Kind of reminded me of like My Bloody Valentine because she's killed with like this pickaxe. Goes right into her mouth. And that's the first kill. And you want the first kill to really make a mark because then you know what kind of movie, what kind of slasher you're getting yourself into. But after she dies, then there's this big hoopla around it. And the director is so adamant about, you know... Uh, finishing this show that he kind of tries to use that to his advantage and he tells everybody let's keep going and so by the time you get to the second killing that person who is killed has the key to the building so now they can't get out of the building so pretty smart writing here to keep you invested in this and, and you don't check out and say no there's no way they'd stay in that building they don't have a choice because the person that died is the only person that knows where the key is. Now also, I do like how they use this almost like Sam Raimi type POV, killer's POV throughout. I mean, you could tell they were definitely borrowing, you know, from Sam Raimi. The, the influence is, is there with the frantic camera, you know, as the killer's like chasing one of the victims. And that's the cool thing about Italian horror too. It's like a give and take type thing. You know, there's been American filmmakers that have borrowed from Italian horror and vice versa. Like Argento was heavily influenced by Romero uh, with uh, Night of the Living Dead. And so he ends up making his own version of Dawn of the Dead. And then he lets like, you know, Goblin do the music. And Goblin, I believe, did the music for the American version too. Uh, which is a nice segue into the music. Really all Italian horror films, and I'd say a, a lot of them, you know, especially the Argento ones, uh, use Goblin. 
And this movie feels like that. You know, three different composers did this movie, um, it, but it feels like something out of any Italian horror film. And maybe that's part of why I love Italian horror, because I'm such a, a music guy. And the music, like, it's so good that you could literally not even watch the movie, just listen to the movie, and you could almost tap your feet along the way because the music is just so good. It might not be the scariest music in the world, but uh, it's almost uh, like, like a heartbeat. And it has just an infectious rhythm to it. And really, it makes these movies just fly by. And hell, even uh, Michelle Suave was like a, pro a protege of Argento. So this definitely has a, a, like an Argento vibe to it. Now, speaking of directors, there's a character that's a director in this movie, Peter. And I think every movie is fun if they have kind of a dick or a douchebag in the movie. You know, I call him kind of the Burke of the movie. You remember Burke, Paul Reiser from Aliens? I, I think he set the template for how you play a complete dick douchebag. Uh, in a movie. He's, you know, he's not the, the, the bad guy, the villain that's killing people. He's the guy that's kind of the thorn in the side along the way. They're like, can you please kill this guy and get him out of the way? But in, it, really, in reality, you don't want to kill him. You want to keep him along the way because it just adds an extra layer of tension throughout. That's what this guy is. He's just greedy. He doesn't really care about anybody. He just wants to get his production made. It's nice to take that one-dimensional element out of the movie and you know give it some depth and characters like that do that and you know it's a beautiful movie to look at a lot of the dance routines are really unique um i've always liked watching these like stage shows anyway um it's almost like a musical you know there's an element of that in there but it doesn't take over the movie so there's just a lot to i guess to grab on to when, when there's no killing being done there's still something interesting to look at italian horror and lastly, uh, the, the final girl of the movie, Alicia, I loved her. She puts up a good fight, I guess, against the killer uh, in the last act, and I like that about it. You know, she, she, she doesn't back down. Really, she can't back down because she's in this situation where she can't get out of the place. Also, there's this one character that really reminded me of Melanie Griffith from Body Double, and she does have, like, a really great kill where, like, her, her body falls through the floor, and these characters, they, they're trying to pull her back up and they pull up the, the top half of her body because <laughs> the killer's already like ripped her in half, you know? So in the end, guys, I'm going to give Stage Fright a super, super high purchase worthy. What a fun movie. Uh, highly rewatchable. Uh, and if you haven't seen it, definitely check it out. It's on Shudder. Um, I did see one member of Killer Flicks say he didn't like the dubbing. That's just par for the course in Italian horror, and I think it's just something you get used to. Really, all of them have that, you know, that the, the, the dubbing where one character might be talking in their native, you know, language, and then another character could be talking in English. And that's okay, they just figure it out. So, let me know your thoughts on stage fright in the comments. Looking forward to hearing them. Also, be sure to come over to Killer Flicks where we talk horror all day, and every day on Fridays, we do Free Fire Fridays. Follow me at Drum Drums on my socials, support me on Patreon, buy me a copy. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Drum Drum out.